Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Tequila. I work in the Future Students team at the University of Adelaide, and I will be your MC for this evening. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to our Health HQ session this evening, showcasing the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences degree offerings for 2023. So once again, thank you for joining us tonight. This evening, you will have the opportunity to learn more about our psychology program, um, primarily our Bachelor of Psychological Science and Bachelor of Psychological Science Advanced. You'll get to hear firsthand experiences from our current students and our academic staff, and of course, ask all of the questions I'm sure you have. So before we begin, um, I would like to acknowledge that the lands we gather on today are that of the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of our land. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to the country, and we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to the land and their cultural beliefs. Now, without further ado, Moving on to the main event, I would like to introduce you to our lovely panelists for the evening. Um, panelists, when I call your name, uh, could you please take a moment to just introduce yourself? So first up, we have uh, Melissa Oxlid. Uh, good afternoon, well, good evening. Uh, my name is Melissa. I'm a clinical and health psychologist, but also a senior lecturer here in the School of Psychology at the University of Adelaide. Uh, my other roles include being the academic lead for our internships and employabilities for psychology undergraduate degrees, and I'm also the program coordinator for our Masters of Health Psychology program. Thanks, Melissa. Um, next up, we have Peter Callaghan, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thanks, Tequila. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Peter. I'm a lecturer in the School of Psychology. I'm a social psychologist and I teach into the uh, Bachelor of Psychological Science program here on campus. And I'm also the program coordinator of the online graduate diploma in psychology. Thanks, Peter. And next up, we have one of our current students, Georgie. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Georgie. I'm in my third year of the Bachelor of Psychological Sciences and I'm also majoring in neuroscience. Thanks, Georgie. And last but not least, we have another one of our current students, Jasmine. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name's Jasmine. I just graduated from my Bachelor of Psychological Science and I'm currently studying my honours. Great, thank you. Now, team, um, over to Melissa, who will teach us a little bit more about our psychology program. Thanks very much, Tequila. So, uh, we're very proud of our psychology program here at the University of Adelaide. We're very pleased to say that we are the number one ranked university in South Australia for psychology. And we're ranked um, in the top 200 in the world for psychology as well, which is actually quite a huge achievement given that most universities around the world all offer psychology programs. So to be ranked that highly um, is really impressive as well. We're also renowned for our world-class psychology research. And that's not just the topics of the research that we do, but also the quality of the research and the research outputs. I guess I'd say the other thing that our psychology school is really, really known for is our diversity. So diversity in terms of research. So the research interests of the staff and the types of research being conducted, but also in terms of the research methodology. So one thing that sets apart our graduates is that they not only get standard skills in psychological um, measures and research methods from a quantitative perspective, but also we're highly regarded in terms of teaching qualitative research methods. And in terms of our postgraduate programs, we're the only university in South Australia that offers multiple programs. So we have master's programs, not only in clinical psychology, but also in health psychology and organizational and human factors. Next slide, please. So we'll start off by talking about our Bachelor of Psychological Science degree. Um, so this is the degree that Georgie um, is completing at the moment. And as she indicated, she's also majoring in neuroscience. So as part of this degree, you can undertake 35 um, different major sequences along with your psychology. And it's an opportunity not only to develop practical research skills and interpersonal and communication skills, but it's really giving you base knowledge about human behaviour, which can be applied in any number of different career fields and opportunities. So you're going to be able to develop a lot of knowledge and skills that's adaptable to a number of different workplaces and careers. And indeed, in some recent surveys, psychology was rated as one of the most versatile degree offerings in terms of keeping a whole heap of different career pathways open. 
Next slide, please. I really enjoyed psychology in high school and I think because of that, that really is what started my interest in it and um, I thought straight away that I was going to do psychology further in university. My favourite parts about the degree are definitely the amount of flexibility it allows. A lot of the lectures you'll find are both online and in person so it really helps if you've got a part-time job or other commitments. So far I've taken electives mostly within the neuroscience domain so I've also worked in the Ray Last labs down in the HMS building and it really shows you how the theories that you're learning apply to the real body, the real person. I love the research component in honours so as part of our degree I really enjoyed psychology in Okay, so we've had a little bit of a technical glitch there, but that's okay. We'll move on um, to talk a little bit more about the degree in detail and exactly the sorts of things that um, students would study when they undertake this degree. So it is a three-year full-time degree, um, and there is intakes in February and July, so there's two options to start the degree. Essentially, you're going to learn about a really broad range of knowledge around human behaviour. So we're going to start out learning about things like human development and the biological basis of behaviour which obviously complements some of the other majors very well if you're interested in um, more of the health and medical science type majors. You're also going to learn about investigating the mechanics of perception and learning, how we learn, how we perceive the world, look at how we're motivated and emotions, um, social psychology, so how we are affected by culture, how we influence each other and also things like personality. We're also going to teach you about psychological testing and measures and you'll get some experience at trying some different measures and undertake specific research projects and an opportunity to develop interpersonal and communication skills. Next slide, please. So some of the key areas, we do um, try to give you a really broad grounding in psychology. I think one of the great things about psychology is you can put 10 psychologists in a room and we all do 10 completely different things. And so part of our responsibility in an undergraduate degree is to expose you to a broad range of areas and interests so that you can work out what are the things that are most interesting to you that you want to pursue. So um, some of the key areas that we cover in the undergraduate degree focus around memory, so looking at short and long-term memory, how we encode and retrieve memories, a key focus on mental health, but also learning, um, social psychology, where we're learning about a whole range of fascinating things like racism, prejudice, forgiveness, social justice, and motivation and emotion, as we said, also looking at intelligence and personality, developmental psychology across the lifespan, so looking at um, child development, but also what happens as people age, biologic basis of behaviour. And then we've also got a really strong um, offering in range of cross-cultural psychology in terms of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledges and content, um, but also looking at refugee and migrant content as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the diversity in our research methods offerings where we teach you quantitative and qualitative methods um, in addition to mixed methods research. Next slide, please. So here we've listed just um, a few of the kind of very flexible and adaptable skills that can come from doing an undergraduate psychology degree. Um, so as well as getting knowledge in those broad range of topics related to psychology that's specific content, we want to give you broader generic career skills that you can apply across the board. So we're talking about things like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and in particular learning to use evidence to inform the decisions that you make. We teach you about how to do research within specific frameworks and writing and communication when we're talking about communication, not just um, written communication, but oral communication as well in a range of different formats or a range of different audiences. We also encourage our students to develop skills in what we call um, reflective analysis and reflective behaviour. So we can learn about how our behaviour affects others and how in turn others' behaviour affects us. So a whole range of kind of very flexible and adaptable skills um, that can be applied in a range of different contexts. So even if students decide not to continue on with postgraduate psychology um, study, there's a lot of fantastic basic skills that will be useful across the board in a range of different industries. Next slide, please. So what does it actually involve? So it is a three-year degree. 
Um, there is some flexibility within the degree. So we have some core courses, but also some electives. So in first year, we have four core courses where we teach you the basics of psychology. So things like uh, what we call psychology 1A and 1B, where we're really focusing on those content areas. We also have a course in research methods and there's courses in things called skills and applications where you're learning to apply psychology knowledge. But there's also scope in that first year to undertake four elective courses. In second year, there is five core psychology courses. And then again, there are electives. Now with your electives, you might be choosing to undertake a second major to sit alongside psychology. Or in recent years, um, we're very excited to say that we've introduced some research and practical applied internships to our degrees. So um, in these cases, students can take a three unit elective course where they can take the knowledge they're learning in their degree, either as a second or third year elective and get out into the real world and get some hands-on experience in a workplace. So that might be working in a school, working in a government department, um, if you're looking at one of our psychology internships, or now we also have research internships for students who are really interested in developing and learning their research skills. And if internships are something that you're interested in learning more about, we're very fortunate to have both Jasmine and Georgie with us today, um, both of whom have undertaken internships as part of their degrees, so they'll be able to speak to to those experiences. In third year, we do again have more core courses and um, some course psychology courses that can be selected from psychology electives and those undertaking their second major will of course make sure they finish off that sequence as well. So in psychology, if we're thinking about going on for further study, it's important that we make sure that we've met the required sequence of, of compulsory core courses. Next slide, please. So obviously we haven't listed all of them here, but we're very pleased to say that there are a really large number of majors that can be undertaken alongside your psychology degree. So that can range from anything from addiction um, to languages, if you're interested in languages, or more music and philosophy, so things from the arts. Um, it's quite common for students to undertake um, criminology or things related to law. And as um, Georgie indicated, um, there's also a lot of stuff around neuroscience as well. So um, you've kind of got a lot of things that you can choose from. You're really only limited by your imagination in terms of all the different offerings that we have that can sit alongside your psychology major as part of your degree. Next slide, please. In terms of career opportunities, so just to be clear, we will um, talk about it a little bit more, but completing an undergraduate degree does not enable you to become a registered psychologist to go out and start working with clients in the field, but it's still a very valuable degree that even if you don't want to go on to take that pathway, there's lots of different career opportunities that are available. So our graduates work in all sorts of different places, whether that's in um, government organisations and maybe even through some of the graduate programs. So a recent graduate is undertaking a graduate program with the Australian Federal Police at the moment. So there's some fantastic graduate programs that are looking after um, psychology students. They're really keen to have students that have that research methodology background, that understanding of human behaviour. But also a lot of our students will move into youth work, counselling, family services, on some of those business marketing, um, advertising type roles, or go on to do research as well. So again, there's a broad range of things, even just with a third year degree. A number of students are working um, for the NDIS or other things like the Department of Communities and Social Inclusion. Next slide, please. So sitting alongside our Bachelor of Psychological Science, we do have a second undergraduate degree as well, which is our Bachelor of Psychology Advanced Honours. So again, just like um, our Psychological Science degree, you're going to be developing knowledge and skills across a broad range of um, psychology areas, which are going to be applicable to a number of different careers. Again, also focusing on those research skills. Um, the difference here, this one is set a little bit more in a global context. And so part of the difference is some of the subjects that are offered as well. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go into the structure of this particular degree. Next slide, please. So this one is a little bit different. So the other degree is a three year degree after which students can apply to get into honours just as Jasmine is doing honours this year. Um, whether the Bachelor of um, Psychology Advanced Honours 
If students maintain a GPA that's set at a specific level, so at the moment that's set at a distinction level GPA in the first three years of their degree, then they're given entry straight into the fourth year honours program. So here we're really focusing on um, high level creative problem solving. Uh, there's a little bit more applied stuff around um, those interpersonal skills and interviewing skills. But one of the main differences is really the global focus. So there are courses around international psychology. There's also courses around technology and psychology as well. So again, here, some of the things are going to be similar to in the other degree, but there are some separate subjects and pathways that are involved in this degree compared to our Bachelor of Psychological Science. In order to progress, like we said, to honours, it is important to be aware that this degree does require you to maintain that distinction level GPA in the first three years to progress through to the final honours year. Next slide, please. So again, this one's going to be slightly different because we've got the four year structure, assuming that a student is going to progress through to honours. So again, there's going to be the core psychology courses and electives, and there's a real focus in that first year on psychology and human ethics, particularly things around social media, online gaming, technology, and um, then in the second year, we move into stuff around the global context. So there's a lot of information around technology in psychology. Um, previously, we have looked at offering overseas study tours as elective as well. Obviously, with COVID, those sorts of things, um, unfortunately, have had to be ceased, but we are looking at reinstigating those when it's safe to do so. We're also looking at virtual um, internships in terms of building that global knowledge and understanding and linking in with other people overseas as well. And second year, you're going to do those five core psychology courses and three electives. In third year, this degree has two courses in advanced career and research skills. One of them is really looking at high level statistics and project management, um, different kinds of research skills than we would learn in the other degree. The other one is looking a little bit more at hands on things around the commercial elements of research and career skills around the sorts of jobs you can apply for and how to apply for them. And again, you undertake eight psychology courses. The fourth year um, is the same, regardless of which undergraduate degree you do. So as it says there, we do do an independent um, research project or thesis in an area of interest, but you are also required to undertake four courses. So we have compulsory courses in research methodology and in a course at the moment called Current Issues, where we teach you about more um, hands-on skills to be a psychologist. And there is also courses that are, that are elective. So at the moment, there are four courses that you undertake in addition to the research thesis in the fourth year. Next slide, please. So again, um, Adelaide University is what we call a GO8 university. So we are well renowned for our research and being a research intensive university and psychology um, very much prides itself on the research that's undertaken, both in terms of the topics, the way the research is undertaken and um, the types of things that we do. So our research can be very diverse. It can range from laboratory um, based studies through to questionnaire survey studies, interview studies, um, and it's the real focus now, a lot of it is on translational research. So for example, um, researchers in the school were recently part of a successful grant bid where they were awarded over $3 million um, and they're going to be looking at um, how to improve palliative care services to be more inclusive um, of vulnerable populations. But we have all areas of psychology covered from um, social psychology to mental health based um, topics, um, intelligence, personality, child development. So there's real diversity within the school in terms of the staff and the methods that um, we use to do our research and now a focus on big data as well and project management skills. Broadly speaking, our research fits under three kinds of banners, what we call health, disability and lifespan, where we're really focusing on how people change over time, how their behaviours change over time in terms of lifespan, but also obviously on health and disability. We have our brain and cognition group who do a lot of work around decision making, learning, how humans influence um, the environments around them. And then our social and organisational psychology researchers, who again, like we said, are looking at really important topics around racism, prejudice, forgiveness, um, but also psychology in the workplace, which is what organisational psychology involves. Next slide, please. 
So again, there's a diverse range of career opportunities for students who do choose um, to not study any further once they complete their degree. And it ranges from the same sorts of things that we talked about before around government or non-government jobs, whether that's research or the more applied hands-on work, whether that's around mental health services, um, counselling, family and social services. Um, many students will choose to go on and do some further study and whether that's an honours degree with us, if they're interested in going on to be a registered psychologist or potentially to become a psychology researcher or academic, they'll come on to do honours with us. But other students may choose to exit psychology at this point and take that knowledge and skills into another area. So they might undertake further training, whether that's in teaching, law, um, social work, speech pathology. There's a diverse number of other degrees that students choose to pursue after finishing um, their undergraduate psychology degree. Next slide, please. I think one of the main things about psychology is that people always assume that, oh, you know, you can read people's mind, but it's, people are so complex. Every client is really, really different and their needs are really different. So what I do for one client might be completely different to what I do to another, depending on what they need. And as part of my job is, I guess, assessing what they need and what I can do to help improve their quality of life. And also, more importantly, to understand what their goals are for themselves. I'm a behaviour support practitioner and provisional psychologist at the Centre for Positive Behaviour Support. So I work with uh, individuals with a psychosocial disability and support them in managing their challenging behaviours. Studying at the University of Adelaide, I think the crucial thing was developing those critical thinking skills, uh, logical reasoning. And what was interesting is that we are evidence-based, you know, so allowing the data, allowing the research to drive our practice. What I love about my job is that every day is really, really different. Some days you'll be out in the field working with children in schools, or sometimes you'll be working with individuals in the community, like in a cafe, or in supported um, employment, or in supported accommodation. And so it's a whole variety of things that you don't know what to expect. Every day is a new day. So my role not only is that working directly with clients, but it also extends to their supports. So that includes their parents, it could be their teachers, it could be their support workers and they're making sure that they feel supported and equipped and better, I guess, managing um, the client's challenging behaviours or better to improve uh, overall quality of life. Providing training sessions to teachers, um, providing all sorts of different resources like having visual schedules, reward systems, giving them physically that they can also implement in the setting they're in, whether it's at home or at school. I think what makes me most passionate about my job is actually the clients, you know, seeing them achieving things that they haven't been able to do before, you know, that brings day-to-day -day, you know, satisfaction as well. It really lifts your day as well. One of the biggest impacts that I hope to achieve, you know, is just to help all clients, you know, that are presented with those kind of challenging behaviours or do lack those skills for independent living, is to support them in the best way possible, you know, being there physically and providing that support and hopefully help them achieve their goals. My name is Jason and I studied psychology at the University of Adelaide. So hopefully by now we've enticed you to apply um, for one of our two degrees. And so we're gonna just talk you through the steps of what's required. So here's our admissions information. So you'll see that there are slightly different criteria for the two degrees. So um, many students will have perhaps studied um, psychology as one of their year 12 subjects, but it's important to note that that isn't actually a prerequisite. So neither of the degrees have prerequisite subjects that you must have studied in secondary school in order to be able to get into the degree. So for the Bachelor of Psychological Science, um, at the moment, if we're looking at ATAR scores, you need an ATAR of at least 65. Comparatively for the Bachelor of Psychology, uh, Psychology Advanced Honours, you're looking at an ATAR of at least 90. And um, we've also got the scores up there for students who perhaps have completed their education through the International Baccalaureate. Um, and also if English is your second language, we do require an IELTS score of 6.5. I think something that's really important to know is that both of the degrees are fantastic offerings and great ways to start a career in psychology. Sometimes I think because people see the word advanced in a degree, they think advanced equals better. It's not that they're better, they're actually different. So each degree will have some things in common that all students will do, but they also have some differences. So if you're interested in our degrees, I'd encourage you to jump onto what we call our degree finder 
and have a look at a lot more detail about the exact courses that are offered in each of the degrees and then choose the, the degree that has the things that you're most interested in studying rather than necessarily focusing on the actual name of the degree. So both of these degrees will give you an excellent pathway to start a career in psychology. Next slide, please. So a question that we're often asked is many students um, study psychology because they're really interested in helping people and they do want to go on to become a registered psychologist. So we do have a bit of a graphic here of how you go about doing that. So if we look at our undergraduate pathways, you can see that you, either of these two degrees can give you a pathway to becoming a registered psychologist. If you undertake the Bachelor of Psychological Sciences, you then do the additional one year for honours and you can then apply for one of our master's programs. If you do the Bachelor of Psychology Advanced and you already have your honours built into your program, then you can apply for the Masters as well. Now, we're not focusing on it tonight, but we do actually have another pathway. Sometimes students have completed another degree and then they decide they'd like to come back and do psychology. So we do actually have a graduate entry pathway where if you have another degree, you can come and do a graduate entry where you do one year to complete your Bachelor of Psychological Science. You then do the one year of honours and go through to our master's programs. Um, as we said, one of the real strengths of our university, not just in this state, but actually across Australia, is the diversity of our offerings. So many of the universities now only offer a master in clinical psychology. We're very proud to say that we do have a fantastic clinical program, but in addition, we have a master of health psychology and also a master's of organisational and human factors. So these programs will give you a pathway into those, um, provided you meet our selection processes into masters. And once you complete that master's program, it makes you eligible to become registered with the Australian Health Practitioner Regulation Agency. And with a little bit further postgraduate supervision, you can gain an area of practice endorsement, meaning you can call yourself a clinical psychologist, health psychologist or organisational psychologist. Next slide, please. Working as a psychologist is a real privilege. You're involved in helping make things better for people. You work with people often from a place where they're in a really difficult position to a position where they're thriving and doing really well in their life. And that's a really, really rewarding thing to do as part of your work. So when you study Masters at, at the University of Adelaide, that was where I really started to advance my knowledge in psychology, in neuropsychology, in a whole bunch of areas. And it's also that time when you get on placement. Doing a Masters of Psychology Health can take you in so many different directions. It's an amazing course to further develop your own skills and knowledge about you know, human beings. I chose to study organisational psychology because once I finished my undergrad in psychology, I worked in the recruitment field. It just seemed like a, a bit of a natural fit to then you know, pair the business side of things with the psychology side. I found my experience doing Masters at the University of Adelaide wonderful. Not only the coursework that we learnt, but the support from faculty and from the staff. It just made the journey so much easier and we've got a really wonderful sense of community as well. Clinical psychology is the clinical application of the psychological science and it involves the assessment and the treatment of mental health disorders. Organisational psychology is the application of psychology into the workplace. We understand the underpinning basis of human behaviour and that's where the psychology comes into it. But the business side is sort of understanding how that works within the system of the organisation and how the, how the system and the people can work best together to get the best outcome. Health psychology looks at health in a really holistic way. So we really look at the individual as a person and their biological health. And then it also looks at their psychological health and then as well their social health. The Masters of Clinical Psychology at Adelaide really prepared me for, for my role and I felt confident in going into the field. This is one of those amazing jobs where every day is different and every client is different and you have the opportunity to do some really interesting and valuable and meaningful work. It's a wonderful field and I would absolutely encourage people to, to give it a go.
So as we heard in the video, and I mentioned earlier, we do have the three master's programs. Um, in terms of the structure of those programs, in those courses, students do um, undertake some additional courses at advanced level. So we teach you um, advanced interviewing and counselling skills, how to do assessments appropriately, and how best to work with clients. So there are a certain number of courses that need to be undertaken. In addition, students do spend over a thousand hours out in the field working with real life clients. So they do three placements and they add up to over a thousand hours. And in addition, they do a research project or thesis related to their area of specialization, whether that's clinical health or organizational um, psychology. So certainly um, the focus tonight is really focusing on our undergraduate degrees, um, but we wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of where it can take you. But if you have an interest in pursuing masters, we often have information sessions around masters as well and can provide information on that. But here you can see, as was um, spoken about by Tim in the video, a little bit about what psychology um, involves if you want to be a clinical psychologist. So we can think of clinical psychology as really being the experts in mental health and wellbeing. And so their focus is specialised training in that area where they're learning about different assessments of development, assessments of mental health, but also looking at interventions to work with a whole range of issues, whether that's from sleep problems um, through to severe anxiety, depression, those sorts of things. And clinical psychologists might work one-on-one -on -one with individuals or they might be working um, with couples or groups. But the focus is really on um, that mental health area. They might be working for the government, in private practice or for not-for-profit um, organisations. Next slide, please. So the Health Psychology Masters, um, as Georgia said in the video, really um, health psychology looks at the person as a whole and looks at the relationships between physical, psychological and social health and looks at how each of those things might um, impact somebody's overall well-being. And it has two different real elements to it. So one element, which is a little bit different from some of the other areas, is that we might not work so much um, with individuals or couples, but some people might choose to work more in prevention. So health psychologists develop health promotion campaigns to help improve positive behaviours. So encouraging people to exercise, um, to go and get screening for skin cancers, things like that and to reduce harmful behaviours like smoking, alcohol. Um, so some people work just more on that broad level where it's about how can I help people to change to healthier health behaviours? Or it might be um, assisting people to adjust to and manage physical illness. So that can be everything from people living in chronic pain, who have experienced an injury, um, to working with people with cancer, burns, a whole range of things. So a lot of health psychologists are actually employed in the hospital system. Um, they can work for the government, again, in private practice or not-for-profit organisations. And as it says, working with individuals, couples or groups, or can be at that population level if you're looking at health promotion and prevention. Next slide, please. So we also have a Master of Organisational Psychology and Human Factors. And again, this is sometimes a little bit of a point of difference from some of the other programs. So there are some other Master of Organisational Psychology programs around, but ours gives us both for the element of organisational psychology, as Hayley was talking about in the video, but also human factors. So organisational psychologists, really organisational psychology is the psychology of work, how people function in a workplace. And they specialise in understanding how people work in them, both individually and in groups. And often people think of organisational psychology more being about that recruitment, HR management side of things, which it very much can be. But it can also be about helping people to make individual change around their careers or helping organisations to change or performance manage. But one of the differences that our program offers as well is also the human factors side of things, where our students learn to focus on the roles of humans in making decisions, how workplace accidents and errors can occur because of the human interaction. And we also have a team that are doing a lot of work around cyber security and working with defence as well. So our Master of Organisational Program showcases the traditional organisational psychology, but also the human factors side of things as well. Next slide, please. We also lastly wanted to touch on if you don't want to go on to become a registered psychologist, what else can you do after you do your undergraduate degree and you potentially do honours? So some people work out early on that they love psychology and understanding human behaviour, but they don't want to work one-on-one -on -one, um, in a clinical setting. So there is a pathway to become a researcher or an academic. 
So again, you would undertake your undergraduate degree and your honours, but instead of going on to do a master's degree, you can do a doctor of philosophy, and that opens the pathway to an academic or research career. And as you can see, that is also a pathway for students who come through our graduate entry program as well. Next slide, please. So that concludes the formal presentation. Um, hopefully we've given you a bit of a background to our two undergraduate degrees, but also shown you some of the pathways of where it might take you if you want to stay on in psychology, either to become a registered psychologist through our three amazing master's programs, or to undertake um, a doctorate of philosophy with us to go on to a research or an academic career. So I'm gonna hand back to, to Keela and um, she'll start the Q&A session. Yeah, thank you so much, Melissa. That was fantastic. It was a really great insight and a great opportunity, I think, for all of us to hear a bit more about the psychology program and the different pathways available. So thank you very much. Um, and now to everyone, we're going to spend some time actually answering the questions that have come from our beautiful audience. So I can see that a few have come in over the duration of the session um, and more are coming in now as I speak. So one of the first questions that's come in, I think this one might be good for one of our current students, um, if someone would like to take it. It is, can you tell us why you chose to do the Bachelor of Psychological Science? Jasmine, do you want to grab this one? <laughs> sure, thank you. Um, so mine is a bit different to most people, but I did really enjoy psychology in high school. Um, so that's kind of where I started, but I still wasn't sure of where I wanted to go because I still had some other interests. So I actually started off in a Bachelor of Arts and I majored in psychology and I did a double degree with a Bachelor of International Relations. But when I was actually doing those courses in first year, I decided that I actually really liked psychology. So I decided to transfer over. Um, but yeah, I've just always been interested in the field. And yeah, I think it's a good versatile field to get into. Beautiful, thank you. Um, another one that we've got in here, I feel like we definitely covered this one throughout the later part of the presentation, but what are the different career perspectives? Um, I think, Melissa, you answered that pretty well with the different pathways that are available. Is there anything you wanted to add to that one? Yeah, just thinking tequila, obviously we've talked about some of the pathways, but we haven't necessarily talked about employability. And I think that's probably really important. A lot of people go, that's great. I'm studying something I'm interested in, but is it going to lead me to um, a successful employment pathway at the end of it? So certainly um, psychology is one of the fastest growing professions and there is a significant shortage, particularly of registered psychologists in Australia at the moment. So there's certainly plenty of opportunities um, for people wanting to go on to become um, a psychologist from that perspective. So there's a, a massive shortage. But as we said, people don't necessarily just take that pathway. Um, all of our graduates um, take a different pathway and head off into different diverse industries. Some of them come back to us later to do more study, but others find that this has just given them a strong enough grounding to head off into a, a whole range of other diverse things. Our graduates do have very good employment outcomes in a range of different areas. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, another question we've got that's come in um, what advice do you have for undertaking the Bachelor of Psychological Science placements? Um, I'm not sure if that's a question for <laughs> um, our academics or for our current students. Does anyone want to take that one? Um, Tequila, I can give some background just about how the, the internships work, but then it's probably good um, to hear from Georgie and Jasmine about their perspectives um, on it. So as I said, we have two different elective courses. One's called Psychology Internships and the other one is Research Internships. And because these are really about improving students' career skills, the way all of these work is we work with people out in industry um, to source what we call hosts, to host you, to work with them um, for two, usually two days a week for about nine or ten weeks. Um, and we actually do it just like applying for a job. So we secure all of these, we advertise them, and if students want to do an internship, they apply with a resume and a cover letter, and then they get selected to do one. Um, and then obviously they undertake the tasks that are relevant to their particular hosts, as well as some university assignments that go with it. So some students might choose to do the psychology internship, which is kind of more aligned with perhaps a counselling career or a um, registered psychologist career. Others will do the research internship. But um, it's probably good to hear from Jasmine and Georgie about their experiences, maybe of why they wanted to do one and, and what they got out of doing an internship. 
I can go first. Um, so I did my internship in second year. So that was in 2020. So that was right in the middle of COVID, which it was fine. Like we made it work. But um, I did my, I wanted to do an internship because I thought it was, would be a valuable experience to actually go out into the field and like try some different skills that I've been learning in my degree. Um, so I applied and I got an internship with a company called Posimente, um, which was about student wellbeing. So they had a platform where teachers and people in amongst the school can report on kids' wellbeing. Um, and I got to go to like a school and write a case study on how that was being implemented at the school. And I, was, I went and talked to counsellors there and teachers and even students. So I thought that was a, a valuable chance to actually get some hands-on experience. So I would recommend an internship to any future students. Thanks, Jasmine. And Georgie, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually did a, a, an internship that was more along the research lines. So I applied and got into an internship with MESHA, which is the Military and Emergency Services Health Australia. So they look at the mental health and do research around um, uh, mental health in emergency services and veteran personnel. Um, and I got to meet a whole bunch of different people, do a lot of different research projects, one that I did in an individual group with myself and another person. And then we also worked on a um, really big project we did all together, which actually involved qualitative research. So that was really good to learn about that. So um, as well as quant for my own individual research project, but it just was a really good experience to learn critical thinking, um, lots of different ways to do research, learning about um, mental health in veterans. I've never done that before. So that was really good. Um, and it was also really good um, working in a group with lots of different people and bouncing off ideas with each other and learning from not just my supervisor and all the um, professionals there, but also from other people who were actually from other um, universities as well. So from Flinders and University of South Australia. So that was really valuable um, to get all those skills and actually um, sort of hot footed my interest in research. So that's now I'm trying to get some more interest in that, but um, I highly recommend an internship for both experience in research and practicing for psychology. Thank you, Georgie. And while I've got you there, actually, I feel like this question might be a good one for you as well. Um, a question that's come in says, is there a lot of research involved? And can you explain how much in-depth study there might be? In the degree? Um, I don't know too much about the advanced degree, but for myself, there is, we do touch on a lot of different areas of research in the degree, but because I'm a bit of a nerd for it, I went out of my way to really, um, pursue research so I applied for internships and there's also a really valuable thing that I would recommend for people who are interested in research called the um, summer research scholarship which I actually coincidentally did with Melissa so um, we focus on a research paper we illustrated but it might not just be that you might work under other supervisors uh, research projects so if you're really interested in not just learning about it in your course but wanting to get real hands-on experience I highly recommend again the internships but also the scholarships, which are in the summer break in around December, January. So if you want that real experience, if, if it's not enough to just learn about it in class, then I also recommend doing that too. Thank you so much for that insight, Georgie. That was great. Um, we do have a few more questions coming through. Um, this one might be best um, for you, Peter or Melissa. This one um, obviously was touched on during the presentation, but in terms of uh, prospective um, employability and future education, uh, would you say that there's a difference between the Bachelor of Psychological um, Science Advanced or the um, standard Bachelor of Psychological Science in terms of employability and getting into future work? I'll take it if you like, Melissa. No, <laughs> I haven't spoken yet. Um, I think that the that generally no, there's there's no real difference between the two. They they both both of them do allow you to go on to honours, and at honours level, um, the coursework is exactly the same whether you've come from the Bachelor of Psychological Science or the advanced one. Um, the coursework 
during the undergraduate degree and the three year part of the degree, there are opportunities to do, as Melissa has said, different subjects. And so it may be that if you're wanting to get into a particular area that involves more of the global context or cyber psychology, these kinds of things, then the advanced might be uh, the best option to help you um, begin your journey towards that pathway. Um, but essentially, once you get to honours, um, the program becomes identical. And then from there as well, what you spring off from there, um, it, it, it's sort of, it's the same journey at that point. Great, thank you. No, I think that that definitely answered that really well. Um, I guess another question that's just come through now, um, this might be, again, maybe for one of our current students, what are some things you can do during high school to prepare yourself for life at university or for this program specifically? Jasmine, I can see you smiling. Did you want to take that one? <laughs> just trying to think back because high school was a few years ago now for me, but um... I did an, I did IB, which is the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, I think that was a really good program to do, but obviously not all schools offer it. So I think just in general to do um, psychology as a subject, just to get the base knowledge and get some like experience doing the work, I think that would be the best thing you can really do. And managing your work really well is a big part of uni so I think yeah just trying out psychology at school I think that's the main thing you can do. Beautiful thank you. Um, another one for our current students is um, maybe I'll give this one to you Georgie what has been your biggest challenge so far in undertaking the Bachelor of Psychological Science? That is a hard one really. Um, this might sound really stupid, but it's it's trying to figure out what I really like because there's so many different areas of psychology that are so very interesting and thinking prospectively for careers. It's like, do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? You kind of want to do it all. Um, but that's the beauty of psychology is really like embracing everything and then um, sort of eventually figuring out what you want to do. But that's, I guess you can do anything with it, really. That's the, yeah, even with, for example, a clinical um, master's, you can still go on to do a lot of different things with just a clinical master's. Like it's so versatile. So that's been, a, a, a even though it's a bit of a weird one, that has been a, a big challenge for me trying to figure out where I sort of fit in there. Yeah. And while I've got you there as well, this one, um, I suppose, also relates to that crossover from high school to university. Did you find that process easy? Did you get lost? How did you find um, the social life and making friends at the University of Adelaide was like? Yeah, so with high school, I was sort of felt a bit lost because I didn't like I felt like there was just lots of different things going all at the same time and personally for me moving across the university was like a breath of fresh air like I finally got to do what I want to do I felt like I had more control over my subjects I felt like I was learning what I wanted to learn like I chose to learn um and with psychology it's a very diverse crowd of people so you will find your people there are lots of I've made lots of different friends of lots of different personalities but that's just the beauty of it um was there another aspect of that question there just transitioning through yeah no I think you answered that really beautifully um I guess another one that might tie in is um do you have any input or um maybe also Jasmine would like to contribute to this one, but what are some of the extracurricular activities that can you can get involved in at the University of Adelaide? Join the PSA. We're both on the PSA. Um, I'm currently the head of careers and volunteering. So if you want to come to our talks, we're organizing talks soon. We've got a volunteering one coming up soon on the 24th of May. So check that out on our site. Um, and we do talks all the time. It's really good to just network with a bunch of different people. We have master's students, PhD students, honours students, it's, and just to talk to. Um, it's also good for raising money for um, charity and getting involved with volunteering. So that's really good. Um, I guess, as I said before, internships, but that's more for course credit. Um, the summer research scholarships are really good for doing that. Um, 
and also just getting involved with lots of different clubs. There are heaps of clubs out there. So personally, while we're on the PSA, um, I know people in like different language clubs, lots of sports clubs. I'm on the basketball team and that's really good for networking too. Um, there's just really lots you can do and it's good to branch out um, in lots of different areas to just really find um, your grounding and that makes your university life a whole lot easier and better by doing that. And that was a great response. Thank you, Georgie, for that. And uh, I'm not sure if it was a bit of marketing for the PSA club there, but can I just can I just confirm, is that the uh, Psychological Science Association or similar? What's the PSA stand for? We're the Psychology Students Association. So we're a fully run students association. All of us are students and um, we're, we're pretty proud of that by um, being independent from the School of Psychology. But we obviously we you know, we were in cahoots with them too. So that's great. But yeah, we, um, it's great. I love it. And join as a, join as a rep. <laughs> we, we want more people. It's great. Beautiful. No, thank you for that. And I think we, we probably have time for just one or two last questions. I've got one here. Um, can I run my own business as a psychologist? Uh, absolutely. Um, what we say about it? <laughs> um, so I've only recently closed my private practice. So I ran my own business for 11 years. Um, and again, it's going to depend. I would say um, I did my um, undergraduate study and my master's degree at the University of Adelaide, what seems like a lifetime ago. Um, and at the time I went through, most of us when we became registered psychologists really went and worked in the government. And there were very few people that worked in um, what we call private practice or worked in a business where um, you know, they saw clients for payment. So it was really not something that happened very often. These days, it's probably almost flipped. Um, a lot of psychologists are working in private practice, um, seeing clients with a full range of, of mental health concerns or health concerns in general. So for clinical and health psychologists, anybody can um, work in private practice and run a business. We tend to be seeing those sorts of clients. A lot of the organisational psychologists run their own business as consultants. So they come into different organisations and advise those organisations on how to become more effective or to work on staff wellbeing and bullying, all of those sorts of issues. So definitely, um, if you're very interested in both psychology and also have a bit of a business mind and business hat, um, you can definitely run your own business as um, a psychology practice or psychology consultancy. Amazing. Thank you for that, Melissa. That's great. Well, I think for now we are wrapping up towards the end of our session now. So I will put this as, as a hold to the Q&A unless anyone um, <laughs> really wants to insist on one last question. Um, this does bring us to the end of our session um, for the Bachelor of um, Psychological Science as part of our Health HQ event. If you have further questions or if you'd like to talk to one of our future student team members for a one-on-one -on -one chat, please direct these questions to start at adelaide.edu.au. Um, and we'd advise that you put in the subject Health HQ um, or Health HQ Psychology um, so that we can make sure we get to it nice and quick. You can also find out um, a lot more information about the university and about all of our degrees by visiting adelaide.edu.au. And if you're interested in attending a similar session to tonight, we would love to see you on campus for our open day, which is held on Sunday, the 14th of August. Pop it in your diary. It really is the best way to explore the campus and to see all of the amazing facilities and resources that we have on offer. And uh, yeah, please feel free to keep an eye out for the official open day website if you're interested. So I think that just about wraps up tonight's webinar. I would really like to thank our lovely panelists for their time this evening. And of course, a big thank you um, for all of you who have joined us tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thanks guys.